welcome to another episode of Dos and a Half Cinco's. This is episode number 16. As always, I'm your host, David. And as always, I am still Stuart. And sometimes I'm Ben. <laughs> well, welcome to another episode, guys. Um, we'll just start off. I have a Popeye's chicken update. I finally had it today. Fucking and, finally. Uh, wow. I know, I know. Were you I in line this whole time? And then I brought... I've been in line since last Wednesday wow. when we recorded this. Wow. Yeah. So Dedication. it's been a long time coming. The chicken sandwich was, it was good. I'm definitely on the same board, uh, same page as you guys. Spicy was better than the regular one. Um, only had to wait less than 10 minutes because wow. it was raining today. So I guess that deterred a lot of chicken sandwich people. Those yeah. are the people that you know are not, yeah. you know, as we all know, ride or die. As we all know, uh, chicken sandwich aficionados are their their weakness afraid is afraid of rain. Rain, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're averse to rain. The ones that are chicken sandwich fans, averse to stabbing. We're like we're rain. like day walkers, like, like day, day walkers. sandwich wow. walkers. Though we wow. can day we can people. we can handle the rain. We can handle all conditions that normal chicken sandwich people can't. Yeah. Wow, that's right. We're not about the hype. We're really about the. The chicken. I think. Uh, I, I think that was an early candidate for episode candidate title. For what? Uh, I don't know. Chicken sandwich walkers. I don't know. Day walk. Chicken sandwich day walkers. I don't know. Wow. But in terms of chicken sandwiches from like fast food places, definitely up there for sure. Top three. I mean, we talked about the Mount Rushmore last week about it, and you know, it's definitely. In the top three, easily. Yeah. I mean, in terms of flavor, I definitely think if you were just sandwiched by itself, sandwich versus sandwich, no condiments, nothing like that, I definitely put it number one, probably easily, um, especially based on its price point and stuff like that. So you guys didn't undersell it for sure. I'm really glad I didn't die trying to get a sandwich. Um, but yeah, so that's my Popeye's chicken update um, for you guys that really care. I don't think it really matters. I think. I think Ben and I cared. Yeah, we cared. Well, about you. yeah, I heard that if I didn't if I didn't get a sandwich this week, I'd be, you guys would have no hosts until I got a sandwich. Uh, more like permanently, even if you had a sandwich. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. don't worry. We'll find another reason to kick you off. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be hard. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Um, <laughs> kick you off. Yeah, your I brought own him podcast. into the off. I brought him back from during lunch. We passed by. There wasn't much of a line, and then came back to the office and then some people were like oh my gosh is that Popeye's chicken sandwich I was like yes it is if you come near me I'll stab you and then I shared some with it and with them and oh that's, that. that's where you made a mistake I know that's it's all about the love up. yep chicken sandwich people we, we need to look out for each other so um, but I don't know about you guys but how do you guys feel about the fries I'm not a huge dude fan Popeye's of fries. fries are the best what are you talking whoa, 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 about whoa, are they really the fuck up and I mean, I think we found our reason. <laughs> I, I, we already found the reason to kick we David didn't even off. Have to look. I like the we sandwich. Didn't have to I look. wasn't. A, I he offered it up. I wasn't on a huge fan of the fries. I don't know. Maybe they didn't make them correctly. No, nope. but they weren't crispy. Wrong. Well, how long between when you got your sandwich versus you ate your sandwich and fries? Probably maybe five minutes. Well, I don't know. Maybe they just gave you some old fries, but normally their fries are top tier. Yeah, they are. The Cajun fries. Okay, maybe I'll have to go back and be like, "Hey, can I cut to the front of the line? I don't want a sandwich. I just want a yeah. fry." That's why every time Ben gets Popeyes uh, for the fam, like the family meals, like uh-huh. he always just gets all fries. Yep, all fries. Double order of fries. Yep, double order. Got platter, double order. I don't know what I don't know what it is. Maybe I. But here's the crazy thing: is I wasn't a huge fan of them right then and there, but then. My coworkers were like, "Oh, you're not gonna finish those? I'll finish them." I was like, "Dude, they're cold." And they're like, "So what? No, still, still good? good. I was still like, good. I don't. May, I just maybe don't get it. I don't think you get it. I think you're uh, you're you're too old. You're, it's not just not for your generation. Yeah. <laughs> guys, I'm only a year older than you. Guys. Okay, like, boomer. Okay. Boomer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not make me a baby boomer. All right, we're we're, we're spending too much time on this. All right. So besides the movie of the week, uh, Jojo Rabbit, what else did you guys see? Uh, I, not much. I just watched the uh, second episode of Mandalorian. Which also, since we're on the topic of things that David hasn't didn't do yet, uh, did you have you started watching it yet? Yes, I saw the first episode. Fantastic. I don't know how we feel about this. I don't know how 
We're gonna talk about it without spoilers. Do we do this in the spoiler zone also? We'll do. We can, now that we you've seen it, we can do a mini spoiler zone oh, with yeah, it within fine. the right. within the actual spoiler zone. So, sure. I think uh, Mandalorian. What a what a first episode! Holy crap! Wow. That, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but definitely if you have Disney Plus or you have the access to Disney Plus, bar, if you don't have one, borrow from or somebody. If you have an extra seven dollars a month. Which, if you don't, or if you have a if you have a Verizon wireless account or Verizon, you know anything, use that wisely. Go sign up for Disney Plus now that they fixed all the hacking stuff, and go watch it for sure. I am three quarters of the way through the second episode. I was watching it during lunch and then I got distracted, but I am thoroughly engrossed. I wish. They had released all of them all at once, kind of like Netflix style, instead of. I'm kind of glad they didn't. One a week. No, I'm wishing they just released all of them all at once. I would love to just binge watch the whole thing. But yeah, I'm I'm saying I'm glad I'm kind of glad they didn't. Yeah, yeah. Do that because oh, I would have. Well, personally. Oh, left behind. No, no, no. <laughs> personally, I just when there are shows like this, binge worthy shows, um, it's just bad for me because on the weekdays I'll stay up till way too late watching ah, them okay do you mean it's bad for you as in like work life bad work life tv balance yeah so it'd be just work yeah. plus it's it's work and tv balance. it's nice to you know to kind of break the everyone everyone who does shows these days are all releasing them all at once it's kind of nice to kind of break the break the rhythm here yeah 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 instead of it just be and then knowing that i guess it's a little bit easier in pacing wise that you don't have to worry about everybody just like kind of binge watching it and then spoiling the whole thing going oh i watched the last episode within you know it's like did you even work on monday no right stayed up and watched all of um you know house of cards and i'm like what what am i gonna do now Nah, i, I get you but at the same time it's so good that i just want to know what happens next it's a, it's, it's a mystery every life's a mystery um so mandalorian for ben, uh, for Stu. what about you ben uh, this past week I have been catching up on the last season of BoJack Horseman, and well, it's only half a season, so I won't be able to see what the hell is going on until I don't know when they release the last half of the season. And the new season of Rick and Morty started up, so I've only seen the first episode, but so far so good. Um, the second episode just came out this past Sunday, and I still need to take a look at that. I, I totally forgot that it came out. I need yeah, to no, right? start watching it. I know. I mean, it was like they were advertising it at that thing we went to. It's it's crazy. Oh yeah, the uh, what's that thing? The thing. The the thing. The, the Rick and Morty extravaganza. Yeah, the uh, Rick and Morty season four premiere extravaganza booth with special guests. Death Clock, and Who? Uh, Hannibal Burris. David, we saw Hannibal Burris. It was cool. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so at Death Clock. So a uh, quick little mini adventure story uh, for me and uh, Ben. We went to the Adult Swim Festival on Friday, or yeah, Friday, and uh, mainly we were there to go see Death Clock, uh, which amazing by the way. Um, but uh, when we got there, we were waiting for you know all the stuff to go on. There was who was it? Captain Murphy. Never really heard yeah. of. I didn't. I haven't heard of him. But mm-hmm. apparently he has. A, I guess he does a song with MF Doom, which I have. Who I have heard of. Um, and so during that song, they have a guy come out on stage who's dressed as MF Doom with the mask and everything. And then halfway through, uh, Captain Murphy stopped the song. He's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" And it was Hannibal Burris. Uh, Wait, was it Hannibal Burris? Yeah. I thought it was Flying Lotus or something. No, no, it was, it was Hannibal Burris. He was like, what are you doing, oh, fuck, Hannibal? Right. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. And he's making right. jokes about how he can't do MF Doom's rap hands. Yeah, it's like, well, I don't even know what he does with his hands. I don't even know the words <laughs> of his songs. So that was, that was cool. That was funny. That was pretty, that was pretty good, yeah, yeah. Also, we Death. saw Death Clock. Yeah, then the Death Clock was there. That was pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I, how, was, how was Maddie on? We only caught like a, what, a half hour of it. Yeah, but it was still pretty neat. But it was a pretty good half hour. Like, if anything, that would be like the half hour to see. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Like, the visuals and everything. Ooh. Ooh. He's definitely come a long way since the first time uh, he was in L.A., I think. Yeah. And, you know, shout out shout out to Ben for uh, giving me and Evan tickets that started this whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. If if it wasn't well, actually no shout out to Letty so thank you Letty for having a race that weekend <laughs> so Ben would have to give up his tickets yeah. and then me and yeah. me and Evan went to go see our first EDM show and it literally just changed everything and that's when everything s- spiraled out of control oh yeah I know the festival passes went to <laughs> Nocturnal at EDC just every like everything and so that's when the downhill slope began. True, and now my knees don't work as much as they used to. Yeah, I have a constant, I can't constant ringing in my ear. <laughs> what? I can't hear anything above, uh, you know, 80 hertz. I, I'm not sure if it was maybe the shows or maybe it was just me in old age, but, you know, whatever it is. But Wait, do you really have tinnitus? I have, I have a little bit of, is it tinnitus? I thought it was tinnitus. No, tinnitus. Not no, you mean tetanus. tetanus. The te- tendinitis. No, tetanus is the thing what happens where you get stabbed by a rusty anything. Wait, I mean, you did yeah. go to Chick fil or not Chick fil A, Popeyes. What? That's tenders. Oh. <laughs> oh. Man, we are, all, we are all over the. We are all mixed up here. I, hold on, I'm pretty sure it's tennis. Uh, no, that's what like uh, Roger Federer and uh, <laughs> Novak Djokovic play. No, that's play. tennis elbow. That's awful. Tinnitus, tinnitus, T I N N I T U S is the perception or noise of ringing in the ears. I think that's when when you have tinnitus, you're unable to say it properly because uh, you can't hear yourself saying it. So yeah, you just I can't say the word ringing. tinnitus correctly. Hey, you said. All right. Um, sounds like we had a busy weekend. Definitely, if you find one of us and you want to ask us about the Mandalorian, definitely do so. I think there will be not a, I don't think you'll have a, a disappointed person talking about it for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, I'm pretty sure by the time this episode comes out, the entire season will have come out. So no, so <laughs> we will be releasing them more sooner rather than later. I hope. Maybe, we'll get there. All right, well, that pretty much, uh, do you guys have anything else you guys want to add before we get into the box office rundown? Nope, I'm good. Uh, David sucks. That's oh, it. Yeah. That's hey, all. That's David all does not suck. Okay, whatever you say, Dave. Uh, damn, David, that's going to be in there. David does indeed that's gonna leave a, suck. That's going to leave a mark. All right, uh, so this week's box office rundown, we start with four brand new in the top five. Um, four out of the top five are brand new to this list. Uh, Mid- Midway comes in with 17.8. Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining, comes in with 14 million. Playing with Fire, 12.7. Number four, Last Christmas, with uh, Amelia Clark, that is uh, uh, or Daenerys. Boo! Um, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Uh, number five was our number one from last week, Terminator Dark Fate. Um, that was our review of the uh, movie of the week last week. Joker uh, is now slid all the way down to number six from number two. Maleficent down from three to seven. Harriet down from four to eight. Zombieland down from six to nine. Uh, Adam's Family uh, drops out of the top five and is rounds out the top ten. Our movie of the week this week, Jojo Rabbit, does place number 11, uh, up from number 12. Um, and then some of the other ones that... Yeah, fell out of the top 10. Countdown is down to 12 from 7. Motherless Brooklyn from 9 to 14. Black and Blue, 8 to 15. And then Arctic Dogs, the sequel to 5, now Dog 5, uh, down from number 10 to number 16. Also our movie for next week. Yep. Based on uh, how many big actors, voice actors are in this one, that, and then based on how badly it had the first week, we just have to see how bad it is. Total total gross right now is sitting at four point eight million dollars. Nice, Jesus Christ. Nice. <laughs> is this is this one of those tax write off movies that they're doing that they do? This, has this to was be. a charity movie for Jeremy Jeremy Renner. 
No, this has to be like the meta movie for the producers, right? Right? What do you mean by meta movie? You know, like the the like the, the movie that they were making and the movie the producers. Yeah. Or something. Or you know, the <laughs> musical the producers. Or yeah, I guess it was a musical first. Yeah. I've never seen it. I what? only know about it. So what? I mean, I've definitely seen... I, I feel like this was, like, based on where it's from and the based on the cast, it was very under-advertised, I feel. I feel like I've seen a lot of advertisements for it. Like, um, the movie theater... Well, one of the movie theaters I usually go to, they usually put a gigantic banner up on, like, in front of the movie theater. Not, like, just a movie poster, but mm-hmm. something that spans, like, the whole storefront. Oh, like, all the windows yeah. in front? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was for arctic dogs um like a lot of bus stops mine was for terminator really yeah yeah mine had terminator dark fate i thought that was a very interesting choice as well but my yeah yours was arctic dogs yeah maybe they just wanted to put up movies that were gonna bomb because they both bombed (laughs) (laughs) no terminator dark fate didn't bomb it was 48 million oh you're talking about your theater well i mean no i mean terminator also bombed based on its budget I mean, it bombed. What was his budget? Way more than what it made. Well, it's made forty-eight million domestically so far. Yeah, that that ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> that ain't cutting it. <laughs> How many more weekends of ten million do they need? But, um, based on this list, like, what are your what are your guys' thoughts? Are you guys surprised at all? I thought honestly, be, be, for me, I thought Doctor Sleep was gonna be number one. I must be looking at a different list because the order you listed stuff is not in the order of the list I'm looking at. Yeah, actually, what, what happened to Ford v. Ferrari? Yeah, because that's I have that showing number one. Oh, shoot. Okay, now can I play Spanish Flea? Yep. Wait, they have released Charlie's Angels this week? I also see that on my list too, yes. Also, oh dear God! Also. Yeah, David, I think Did, you fucked but, up. So wait, so that means that last week we completely skipped altogether. Uh no, well, maybe. Yeah, because the maybe. the week before we reviewed Terminator, and that still had the same week as Joker, Maleficent, Harriet, uh, Adam's Family, Zombieland, Double Tap, and Countdown was a still a new movie, and then we skipped a week. Wait, oh yeah, we didn't record last week, huh? Correct. So it's in the week before. So yeah, this are you reading last week's? Reading last week's. Yeah. Well, there you go. So we're gonna combine two weeks worth of <laughs> uh, top tens <laughs> of top tens. So this week's top ten is the brand new Ford V Ferrari. Um, that was, <laughs> was with Christian Bale and, and Matt Damon with thirty one point four million dollars. <laughs> I'm surprised. You know what surprised me about this top ten, David, <laughs> is how badly you fucked this up. <laughs> this week's number two movie was number one from last week, Midway. <laughs> number three is a newcomer, Charlie's Angels, at eight point three. Playing with fire slides from number three to number four. Which wait, hang on, pump the brakes. Can we comment on how how did that happen? <laughs> how is playing with fire even in the top five? How did it uh, how did it move up? Right? <laughs> did, did it move up? No, it moved down. It was But it only moved down, down one floor. slot. Oh, never mind. It moved Because it's John Cena and it's a it's a uh, <clears throat> it's not a rated R film. Oh, Oh, how does it doesn't feel so good, does it, Ben? What? When what? you say it. What? When I say it. No, I, I still think I say it better. <laughs> I mean, especially with the context of, you know, you fucking up. I, I, I think, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Last Christmas moved down from number four to number five, Dr. Sleep. Number two from last week, down to six. The Good Liar uh, comes in at number seven. It was brand new. Joker slides from 6 to now 8. Maleficent down from 7 to now 9. Harriet moves from 8 down to number 10. Uh, Terminator Dark Fate moves from 11 to 5. 
uh, from five to eleven. Uh, Jojo Rabbit is you know wasn't in the top ten. It's, is our movie of the week this week? Um, was you know hovering the top fifteen for sure. Uh, Zombieland falls out of the top ten from number nine to thirteen, and then Adam's Family also out of the top ten now down to fifteen. Uh, gentlemen, any thoughts on the second weekly update? <laughs> Um, only that it seems like we keep spilling out of the top 10 and into random numbers, random teens and that you like, that you Oh no, that one's because those ones were in the top 10 last week. Uh, I get it. I'm not, I didn't talk about, uh, Parasite being number 13 to 14, Countdown from 12 to 16, Black and Blue. Okay, you can stop. You can, don't do that. Motherless from 14 to 18. Stop. And then there's a new Fathom event. Oh my god, please stop. Debuting at number 19, Princess Mona... Mona how do you pronounce this? Mononoke? Wow. Is, the, is that the see, anime? you said it. Oh, I was planning on seeing Lighthouse. I didn't get a chance to see Lighthouse. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to ask you that. Still working on it. Wow. Um, but, I'm actually too scared. But yeah, uh, when need? the... It's not. It's not really a scary movie. No, I know. It's it's more like suspenseful, kind of like weird. It's like creepy. cerebral, it's not like yeah, it's not like a, a thriller, thriller. But um, so top ten. What do you guys think? Uh, any surprises? I mean, four versus Ferrari. I I knew it was gonna take top spot for yeah. sure. Well, I no think problem. I think the I voiced my main surprise at playing with fire. Uh, <laughs> somehow. How about Charlie's Angels this, at number this, three? This powerhouse of a cast. Charlie's Angels, um, I mean, I would, I'm not, I mean, when did it debut? It deb- debuted this week? Yeah, this week. Number yeah. three? Yeah. yeah. At number three, still couldn't beat out, beat off uh, Midway, uh, which has been out for a couple weeks now. I guess that's, uh, I guess that makes sense. And, you know, because there's not really anything else that came out. Well, uh, you know, doesn't Charlie's Angels just show you the power of nostalgia? hell of a drug maybe but i'm still not gonna see it i mean like how nostalgic are people about charlie's angels i mean i I don't know i love i i loved me some uh, lucy lou cameron diaz and uh yeah yeah we love those three not these three what about the original three you don't like kristen uh kristen stewart uh forgot the other two yeah exactly Thank you. Oh, for, um, thank Naomi you for making Black. my point. Elizabeth Banks. Hold on. Naomi Kristen Scott. Stewart, Elizabeth Naomi Banks. Uh huh. The banker. Elizabeth Banks isn't even one of the angels, though. She, she's Bosley. <laughs> That's impossible. She's Bosley's Bosley. a man. <laughs> no, she, yeah, she's the man. Well, I don't know who. Who? Wait, is she Charlie? No, I think um, there's still a Charlie. Yeah, it's a uh, what's his name? It's Patrick Stewart. Oh right. I don't know. Maybe it's See, a I wouldn't mind seeing this one. I, think, I know this is not going to be our movie of the week, but I wouldn't mind seeing this. I mean, I think this is just one of those, another one of those instances where they are rebooting movies because they don't fucking, I don't know. Why do they reboot movies that don't need to be rebooted for money? Like money, tax breaks. What is, what is it? I don't get it. Ben, uh, you have any insight here? Eh, it's safe. Good in today's climate. And yeah, it's safe. Yeah. Is it? Is it wait, safe? Wait, wait. Though? Is How it much money did it safe, make? Though? Or I guess uh, uh, eight million so far. Yeah. On what kind of budget, though? If we're talking about Terminator, Dark Fate, bombing, like what is this doing? Um, I'm not sure. Not really sure. Why do we even have Ben on this podcast if he's not going to provide these kind of insights? Stu, you and me were color commentary. This is what hap- I guess this is what happens when this is what happens when Ben doesn't take notes. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is kind of. He's just like I don't know. Hmm. Wow, gee, guys. All right, we'll we'll just count this week as a a combo week. Uh, ben was not prepared for me to okay, pick so, the wrong week to review. You so. know, honestly, you you know what I wasn't really prepared for? I wasn't prepared for you to say that you were ready to do the podcast today. That that's what I wasn't prepared for. Oh, got him. Ouch, that hurt a lot. But yeah, I mean, in terms of just overall list, I don't think this one was a very surprising in general. Okay, yeah. real quick. It had 60 to a $75 million budget. Oh, okay. So they're a long way away from that. This is not a good start. And I don't imagine it's going to get any better. Much better. How about Ford versus Ferrari? Ford v. Ferrari. What, sorry. the budget on it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. 100 mil? Well, I mean... Yeah, about 100 million. 100 mil. 
31 million. Yeah, so so. one third of the way there. Yeah. I think it's going to do pretty well. Especially yeah. after we I mean, go see it. It'll definitely stay in the top five for the next couple of weeks for sure. And then do you think they'll be able to get most of their money back? Yeah. I think so. I don't see this one breaking 100 mil though. I think it could. I mean, it hasn't even. Get into, like, it's been out for midnight. Not as long. It's only been out for about as long as Charlie's Angels, but it's made a lot more than. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, Thanksgiving weekend's coming up. A lot of good, popular day to go see a movie. Also, Dos and Half Cinco's haven't haven't said that this is our movie of the week yet, so the you know the masses don't know about it. Ooh. They don't know. It's true. They don't know that they need to go see Ford, yeah. Ford v Ferrari. Or so maybe it's can... a different movie next week, huh? Huh? Ar- uh-huh. Arctic dogs. Arctic dogs. All right, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that uh, right now. So before we get into our movie of the week, let's talk about our movie for next week. Um, what movie do you guys think that we should be seeing for next week? We just fucking said it. Arctic dogs. Well, actually. Arctic well, dogs. Actually. Oh wait, we are talking about Arctic dogs. Yeah, then Arctic dogs. <laughs> okay. All right. Arctic dogs will be our movie of the week for this week. But um, if so, uh, if that doesn't work out, I guess we can see Ford versus Ferrari. Or so I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't work out. out. Or what? <laughs> or Wait. if it works out, regardless, we're gonna review both. Okay. Because Ben, I think he's already seen Arctic Dogs. I think that's why he's pushing for it. I think you're confusing like me Thor with the your Explorer. David. <laughs> no, I, I already <laughs> saw Angry Birds too. You're confusing Arctic Jokes Dogs you. for. Angry Birds 2 and Ben for David. <laughs> Which is very easy to do because they look exactly alike. Five now, dog five. Yeah. Um, so, for the movie of the week next week will be Arctic Dogs, back by popular demand. Just like the Popeye's chicken sandwich. All right, let's go into the movie of the week this week. That is Jojo Rabbit. Uh, ben, what do you got for us? Nothing, remember? <laughs> No, I, I prepared, kind of. Swifty, the Arctic Fox, works in the mail room of the <laughs> Arctic Blast Delivery Service. Wait a minute, I did this money. last week. <laughs> he earns to become a top dog. <laughs> the Arctic Star Husky Couriers. So now the birds must plan together with the pigs to overcome this new threat and see who really is an angry bird. Wait. <laughs> Wait, did you just throw in an angry birds reference just now for so Jojo no Rabbit. reason? Man, what a what a strange movie. What a crazy plot. <laughs> Jojo Wab- Jojo Wabbit. Yeah, His nemesis is Elmer Fudd. Yeah. 3D dogs. Because he doesn't know if it's rabbit season or duck season. Squirrely rabbit. Choix are for kids. Nope, I'm I'm not touching this. I'm not touching this one. I'm not putting my name to this one. Thanks, Stu. <laughs> and back to the show. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sullying my good name. Getting involved with that garbage fire. I mean, I could just reach in and grab him. He's he's right there drowning in front of me, but maybe he deserved it. Maybe he deserved yeah. it. Just life preserved, please <laughs> save me. It's like the movie Titanic, you know, we're on the lifeboat and we just see you drowning to death. And we're just like... Yeah, and then Billy Zane him. shoots him. Right in the chest. Great. All right, Stu, uh, <laughs> give, us, give, give us your rating or your review on Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> Uh, it was, I like, it was very good. It was very, uh, it was a fun, it was a fun movie, but surprisingly, uh, had, you know, it's touching moments. I feel like this was kind of similar to what, what movie did we watch last week? Terminator Dark Fate. No, before, okay, before that. Well, whatever. (laughs) It was, you know, it was. Zombieland Double Tap. It was funny and it had its touching moments, um. I was surprised. I kind of didn't really pay attention to the cast um, going into it, um, but I was surprised to see that uh, some of the people who did show up in that movie. So that was a nice surprise. Uh, you know, Scarlett Johansson, Sam Rockwell. Uh, it, was, it was a very good casting. But uh, yeah, I, very good. Uh, I give it a eight and a half uh, out of ten. Okay, Ben. Yeah, I mean, same thing. 
great story really great performances i was i don't know i mean going into it i you know, I, I knew that you know taika waititi he he made the film so i was expecting something a little light-hearted and you know fun funny you know and uh you know going into it i kind of forgot that hey this is about world war ii you know and uh when, when we did get to the emotional moments of the film i guess i was caught really off guard i was like oh oh yeah we're, we're doing right. nazis and, and world war ii in germany i don't know what i was expecting to happen <laughs> so yeah i mean i think for me <laughs> i was yeah. expecting like kind of like what the first half of the movie was well yeah. i don't know this well, sounds too much spoilery so i'm gonna shut up yeah yeah but um, okay. to be you know just uh very broad in general i'd say yeah it's a very very good movie i would put it definitely in my top three movies of the year so nine out of ten nine and a half maybe wow. yeah wow i'm with i'm with ben on it i give it a nine and a half out of ten wow we're getting we're I'm getting still holding out for we're getting really, dangerously really close <laughs> Yeah, no, right? I know. I yeah, know. It's only because I feel like this movie, pretty much, it the pacing was great. I didn't want it to end, pretty much, but it just it had its it had happy moments, had very touching moments, and it definitely did all of it really well. The acting was compl- It was really, really good. I really loved Scarlett Johansson's role in this, um, and it just I don't know. It took. It was able to take the situation or the scenario and then give it a humorous spin but at the same time it still was able to capture just like the tension of that era that that time in in life in germany and the struggles of you know growing up so i think this was fantastic i really love the film i definitely would have no problem seeing it four or five more times yeah that that's that's how i'm looking at it is like you know, great film altogether. Everything was shot really well. Pacing was great. Characters were well, well developed, and the chemistry on screen for everybody was it. Oh man, it was just so much. It was so much joy to watch this one for sure. And even though, you know, there there are points that you're just gonna be like, oh, but yeah, great film. Made you made you laugh. Made you cry. Made you feel uh, yeah, feel good at the end. Yeah, to add on to that, um, yeah, it. it... It's really charming, the movie. I, I forgot how charming it was until, I guess, we're starting to bring everything up. And it, it, this sounds kind of weird, but it, it's so charming that, you you know, you kind of fe- want to feel like you're part of it, you know. And then you realize, mm-hmm. oh, wait, it's World War II. <laughs> yeah, you kind of get caught up in a second, right? I mean, during all that. But um, we'll get into that in the, uh, the, the spoiler zone, I guess. Um but is there anything else you guys would want to add? I definitely have been recommending this like crazy. I had a friend of mine who saw it before we did, um, and he was just like, "Man, that was so good." And I was, and I was like, "Wow, I don't know if this guy maybe he's overselling it or not." But as soon as I watched it, I was, I was like, "Wow, he could not have, he could have tried to oversell it, and he wouldn't have been able to." This was very well done. Same thing with like very similar to like Parasite. That's what Stu you were talking about. I think uh, this reminds yeah. me a lot of uh, Parasite. That's probably, that's probably what right? it was. I yeah. mean, it had its difficult moments and stuff like that, but at the same time, it was able to portray its message without being preachy. Um, it was able to be humorous without, you know, dumbing down um, the tension or some of the the seriousness of the the environment or the situation that they're in. So, I think that one's a, that's difficult. To be able to come across, it's the reason why I want to get so close to ten, but I'm holding out for something. Um, but if I if I don't see any other films this year, I would probably give it a ten. I mean, I think w- one of the one of the things that makes this movie great, um, and this is, shouldn't really be a spoiler because it's it's just history, but it takes World a. War two. <laughs> if you yeah. haven't read a history it, book in yeah. forever, um, <laughs> sorry, spoiler: yeah. uh, America won yeah. the war. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is that it, it takes this, you know, the setting that is typically portrayed probably, I don't know, Bleak. throughout movie history as like a very dark uh, time, but it takes it and kind of adds this kind of levity to it. This, you know, it's, you know, hit, you know, obviously, you know, with Hitler and everything, you know, you probably, I don't know if this has ever really been done before. Um, mm-hmm. 
in this in this kind of way. So that I think that's kind of one of the things that makes it such a good movie. Yeah, kind of like giving itself like a different side to it. Just like, hey, by the way, yes, there's a war going on, but there's also another life that's happening, like the day to day kind of thing that right. you know, we don't get a ch- chance to see in the history book because. Hey, guess what? People are dying, and there's a war being fought for you know about ideologies and and you know mass genocide and stuff like that. And you know it's very easy to get caught up in the very bleak and very you know morbid uh, background that is the history. But being able to do this in this light and still give it that weight based on its history, it it that's hard to do. And they did it absolutely spot on i don't know anybody that wouldn't i don't know if i wouldn't recommend i eh, let me rephrase i don't know if there would be a single person i wouldn't recommend this movie to yeah i think everyone can enjoy this movie they could take something when away from there, it for I, sure when i was there there was a a mom and bringing her like i don't know 12 year old kid to watch it so yeah this is definitely a family movie but there definitely are it that you can Everybody can get something from this movie for sure. Kind of like uh, Ben did with uh, with Dora the Explorer, yeah. right? Yeah. Ben, it's I mean, a movie for everybody. Who doesn't like so. Dora the Explorer? No one. Yeah. So, well, uh, you know, brief summary. Great movie. Go see it. Period. All right. We're going to go into the spoiler zone if that's okay with you guys. I mean, I guess. I mean, yeah. Yep, we're already in it. We All right, just, great. Oh. So... <laughs> We always go every week. We're in the spoiler zone, but you have to go. All right, fine. We're in. It. We're in it. We're in it. We're, All right, we're in the spoiler zone. Get it over right. with. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. All right. Who uh, wants to go first? Ben. Um, Stu. Uh, I really, really, really. Well, like let me tell you. <laughs> go, no, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead, Sue. Right. Just finish that thought. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, if you insist. Uh, so. I really enjoy how the movie started off um, with this kid just staring in the mirror and then talking to to imaginary Hitler. And as soon as he gets out, oh my God, I could not stop laughing. Him just screaming and running out the door and just pretty much just dabbing his Heil way Hitler. down the street. Just yeah, yeah, screaming, you know, Hail Hitler. Hail yeah, Hitler. Uh, there was no, a little he, bit of dabbing going on. <laughs> it, it wasn't even just like, Hail Hitler. It was like, Hail Hitler, Hail Hitler. <laughs> Holy fuck, he was just screaming it, like, going so fucking fast. And not only that, the, what was it, the opening credits with, um, where they're doing Beatlemania, except, uh, it's Hitler. Right. <laughs> oh, they're singing it in German? Yeah, yeah, the Beatlemania stuff. It, it was so fucking good. And instead it was Hitler, and they're just like, and I, yeah. you got this, yeah. and it's just like Hitler, and then all the Hitler youth are just like, <sighs> Yeah, I want to yeah, hold yeah. your hand, <laughs> That was so fucking good. It was so fucking good. It really, I really thought it was just going to be this comedy movie for the entire thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I was just like, yeah, this is a great movie. And then, you know, we got to um, some of the darker spots of the movie. And I'm like, oh, shit. That's right. <laughs> that There's things I need to be worried about. So you're, you're kind of lost up in this. Um, and I, I guess that's what they kind of aim for at the beginning of the movie. You know, it's about this this kid who doesn't have like a really a care in the world that there's no such thing as like, um, you know, right versus wrong. You know, there's only just one ideology out there and that's how it is. Like uh, the, the setting is really bright. It's very vibrant, you know, all of, all of the Germans towns people, you know, they're, they're all very happy. And I mean, then, shit, uh, I, I almost wanted to, like, be in that, live in that town. Yeah, like, it was so That looks fun. dope. I wish I was in, I wish I was in Nazi Germany. Damn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish I went to Nazi camp. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be a Hitler youth. You didn't, the Hitler, uh, not you didn't, that's you. Hitler youth. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I like how as the story went on, you know, this, the town slowly deteriorates. It gets a little more bleak, you know. But uh, you know, yeah. everybody but, gives up uh, their pots and pans and slowly has to give up all their food. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand what was going on during that time. But, you know, as this time went on, I'm like, oh, that's what's going on. Because, like, when he was collecting metal, I'm like, oh, that's funny. He's in a robot suit. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why are they collecting metal? <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, I, I think they did that part well. 
it, it also kind of gets you caught up in the oh i'm a kid you know i don't know any better but you know there's something darker you know more sinister going on around and it, 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 it is a great coming of age story. You know, it's it's a great coming of age story mixed in with this very dark time, but it's still very comedic. Even all the dark, uh, more serious notes of the film still had like some sort of uh, element of humor to it, which was really great. Like uh, like the, the, the part where the Gestapo actually go to um, his house, that was pretty intimidating you know steven Merchant, yeah steven merchant he's a pretty funny guy right but um they really use his tall physique to really uh really bring on his emphasize on the uh, arianness <laughs> yeah they actually um had that scene where he was talking to sam rockwell in that scene when he's looking down on him they actually had him standing on a box to, yeah i figured um, that was a little too tall for then <laughs> what he actually was but yeah I think I think I got their point. They were trying to drive. <laughs> yeah, but I, one of the best parts about that scene, I would have to say, is the. Um, it really highlights how the whole movie worked. You know, when the Gustavo first enters his house, you know, it's a little intimidating at first, but when they enter the house, you know, Seymour says, Hail Hitler. And then, you know, Joe Dor responds with, Hail Hitler. And then everyone else enters the house and they're like, Oh, Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. <laughs> and they're all hell. <laughs> and then, you know, Sam Rockwell enters the house. He's like, Oh, hey guys, what's going on? And, you know, Seymour Merchant's like, Oh, you know, oh, Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. And then, you know, they do that with fucking Alf- Alfie Allen, too, you know? <laughs> it's just like, it just goes back and forth. And it was really funny. But then. We get this contrast, this really great contrast when, um, oh shoot, I, I can't remember her name, but um, the girl, right? The Jew, she comes, the Jew girl. Yeah, yeah the, Jew, the Jew girl. She uh, she comes down and pretends wow. to be racist. Wow, racist. <laughs> the girl comes down and <laughs> pretends to be his sister. Thomason McKenzie. Thomas and well, Mackenzie, sure. What was her name yes. in the movie, though? Oh, Elsa? Elsa. Was it? Sure. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Elsa. Elsa comes out and pretends to be Jojo's sister, and they do that whole spiel again. They say, you know, Hail Hitler. But this time, you know, the, the comedic tone has kind of just vanished completely, you know? I found myself laughing at the first few passes of it, but as soon as it got to her having to say it, it, it takes on this this new meaning, you know? And I, I really enjoyed that, where a lot of the same material used throughout the film, it slowly shifts into a more serious tone quite easily. I mean, I, I know that um, this is a difficult time for a lot of people to kind of read about, you know, during World War II, especially if you're, you know, during the Holocaust... But I think Stu nailed something that this I did. Movie does Holy really shit! Well. Is it, that you. <laughs> what that was it, like, it? What did I say? Was I talking? Oh my god! I blacked out. No, the the uh, the humor in the beginning kind of humanizes and makes it kind of like makes you understand why there were so many people that believed Hitler so easily, right? Like it was such a bleak. It was so such a hard time for them during World War One after, you know, what had happened to them, that, you know, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't people believe? or follow a guy that's charismatic like Adolf Hitler, right? That he would, that, you know, children, I'm sure he, they were, he wasn't alone probably, right? That had like imaginary friends that had an imaginary friend that was Adolf Hitler, right? Someone he wanted to be part of his, because they, they made it sound like, hey, like, you know, this country is this Aryan race that nobody else can be a part of, that nobody else is, should be a part of. You guys are perfect. You guys are the ones who should be ruling the, the, the planet, blah, 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 this other stuff. And then just kind of like it, you kind of get a chance to be able to, they capture that, right? And it just, he almost humanizes it a little bit, just like how easily they, you can get swept up in that and that, you know, without actually seeing the other side of it, you know, they, they you can become entranced by it and then you can just blindly believe it, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, how could you, how could you believe all that or anything like that? And I think that they were able to show that this was possible through like it's very approachable based on the way that it's 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 shown right that they have these like hitler youth camps and they're showing how great war is and stuff like that because it's like why would a kid want to go off to war but then they make it sound so glorious right you're fighting for the aryan race and and 
you know, you guys are perfect, blah, blah, blah. And then... Well, I think that happens you know, they, in... They, it's like... I think that happens in any society, any any society. Yeah. You look at even like if you look at um, you know, other World War II movies that are portrayed from the you know American side. Uh, everyone, everyone's always like talking about how eager they are to to sign up for oh, the, like Captain sign up America. For, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sign up for you know to enlist, um, you know, and goes you know go serve the fight the fight the Nazis, et cetera, et cetera. It's like look, is very um, it's it's very glorifying. Uh, very, yeah, yeah, it's a good glor- It's very glorified, and and just kind of shows you that, like, th- even though that Germany was is the the enemy, they on their side, they're they're having the exact same kind of approach to it. People there, you know, where you know it's looked, it's uh, it's looked on as a positive thing to to want to serve the fatherland and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, so I I think that the that's the reason why I really enjoyed this film so much is that it was able to capture that without being overly you know, heavy handed in it, in, in it's like approach. Um, but I think Ben was also had a really big point is just who wrote it, right? The director, uh, I can't pronounce his or her name, his name, Taika, right? Taiki, Taika, 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 yeah. Like the Nicki I mean, Minaj. I really, song. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, I know that he also wrote what Thor Ragnarok, right? He directed it too. Yeah. He directed, directed. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean the humor and like the seriousness, like it, it takes a special hand or skill to be able to blend those two together, like the seriousness and also like the funny bit, to be able to flip the script so quickly without it being jarring. Like you, I never felt like I was, kind of like whoa, okay, that was a really change, like a cr- like crazy change in tone, but it was just kind of like, you could kind of feel the tension at building as like the humor was still there, like you were saying like before, you know, uh, Elsa meets pretty, pretty much pretends to be the uh the sister so you know that kind of thing was diff- was very interesting um one thing i wanted to ask was i i talked to my coworkers who i saw the movie with um was what did you guys feel about rebel wilson's role in this movie uh, i don't think it was as impactful as other you know other characters i would say she was there purely for comedic reasons which I but thoroughly I feel, enjoy. I feel like she always. I, I don't know what it is, but I think in the last like five or six movies, I feel like the movies have been different, but her character has always been the same. I guess in a like sense. Kinda, I mean, she's always kind of comic relief, right? Yeah. But it's like almost like kind of like forced, right? It's supposed to like I don't know. Like I sometimes when I watch stuff that has Rebel Wilson in it, I'm like I know that this was intended to be funny, but I didn't think it was that funny. I don't know. I thought I thought her parts were her lines were pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, like, I only yeah, thought it was funny like, at the very end when she was strapping all the dynamite to the kids. Like, yeah, hey, go, go give hug one of the G- yeah, go funny. hug one of the GIs. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I, for, she did her I enjoyed her scenes. Yeah, I mean, again, it wasn't um, like Ben said; it wasn't important to the story, but it was still it was they were still good like comedic moments. Uh, uh, you know, moments for her, um, like I, even her first line when she says that she's had like 80, had like 80 babies for the, the yeah. father, fatherland or something. Yeah, I, mean, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not like she, you know, didn't add to the movie in some meaningful way. She she provided some good, you know, com- comedic relief even like during that tense war scene, uh, or not war but battle scene. And uh, I mean, she's kind of like Alfie Allen, right? He didn't really provide anything, but he was still right. Yeah, you know, great. <laughs> I would say it, it's funny just seeing Alfie Allen so chipper and so happy. Yeah, <laughs> so around. so non uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, so non flayed and non submissive. Yeah. You're right. Uh, and you know, it's, uh, kind of uh, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't too under the radar, but there was you know that the this some the homosexual yeah. uh, <laughs> kind of relationship funny. between him and Sam Rockwell yeah, was which was you know just another thing that just added to the to the humor of the whole movie yeah i like their little relationship that they had going on <laughs> yeah cuz it was just like very brief little like you know yeah uh, like why are know. they hanging out all the time it's just like <laughs> oh <laughs> it's like it always seemed to show them like as if we were like walking in on them and they were just gotten in, interrupted like they didn't want us to see like what they were doing, so I thought that was pretty funny. 
Yeah, and it was... I, I like how the first time you see that was right after that other thing where it's like, no, I, I, I said I wanted dogs. I didn't really mean German shepherds. <laughs> yeah, oh, the German, German shepherds. shepherds. And they were at the end of the movie, too, which was also fucking great. Yeah, they were all fighting. That was awesome. They were fighting with them, so I was just like, oh, my fucking God. So, all right, if you had to if you had to pick your favorite moment, what would you pick? Uh, we'll start with Stu. Oh, shit. Um... Man, I hope I I want to go last, but I'm really hoping you guys. Are we talking? Are we can, are we like just favorite overall moment or like favorite com- comedic moment or favorite like uh kind of favorite overall moment? Ah uh, shit. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a feeling it's probably going to be comedic. Well, okay, I have two moments if I can. If All right, that's be allowed. fine. I'll let uh, you have two. I'll say that I think the first moment uh, that comes to my head is going to be on the comedic side, where. Um, kind of went earlier when uh, Sam Rockwell's uh, Captain K, I think was his name, um, is he's he's showing uh, Jojo his drawings for his his armor he or his <laughs> and stuff, and then at the end of the movie you see him just standing there all Dang heroic it. with the with that armor that that exact armor so <laughs> with the feather on the yeah. hat and then the and cape. Then, and then what's his name? His I forgot. What was the, his the other character? His like I don't think Alfie Allen's Alf- character had a name. Well, whatever. His character is like he's standing there with like the radio or whatever that's supposed to be playing bad music or something. So. <laughs> Demoralizes like the, the just people. the whole makeshift, uh, you know, uh, the makeshift nature of his his uh, that armor. That I think that was like the reveal was pretty funny. Uh, so that's probably one of my favorite moments. And then the other the other moment is more on the dramatic side was and it kind of hit me like this is when like it hit me like oh shit this isn't just a comedy was when uh jojo is following that butterfly and all of a sudden he stands up and you see his mom's shoes hanging from the the gallows i was like oh fuck me yeah that was that was (laughs) tough for me to watch because she had she did such a good job playing the the character of his mom yeah, you really. I don't, she was just really charming, you know. It was just like, man, she was so fucking great. And they did a lot to establish that, you know, that moment, right? You know, there's a lot of shots that emphasize her dancing, or you know, on her shoes specifically. And then when we finally yeah. get to that scene, it's just like, fuck! It just punches you so fucking hard in the gut. It's just ah, it was such a good moment. So. Yeah, and one question before you guys get into your thing. Um, as far as, because that's we're talking about that scene, um, you see him go to t- tie her shoe that's untied. Uh, would you say? Would you say that the whole during the whole movie he always knew how to tie his shoe? He just wanted his mom. To, he just liked it when his mom did it. I think so. I, you could say that. You could say that. I don't know. That's a very interesting way of looking at it. That's or maybe, or maybe that was his way of being able to say, "Mom, I I know." I think at that point in in this in this movie or this story, he realizes that he's got to do it on his own now, right? He's he's got to mm-hmm. become a grown up, right? Right. And right. he's been watching his mom do it for a long time, and then now he's taking up the torch, and he goes, "All right, mom, I'm gonna," you know, that was his way of saying, "Yeah, I can take care of it now." Okay, very good. I guess it's uh, kind of open for interpretation. So yeah. Either way sounds good. Yeah, it's definitely a... I definitely see what you're saying. I think it's definitely a passing of the torch moment. Whether or not he knew from the beginning, whether or not he did did or not. But I think, yeah, there's just so many ways to look at that. Because, I I mean, if you look at the way at the very beginning, he doesn't know how to tie his shoe. Like, literally doesn't know how to tie his shoe. But then, you know, his mom is giving him instructions, repeating it over and over again. And then... I think he realized after he found you know he was walking around in the robot suit and he followed his mom and then saw that she left this piece of paper on the table that said free Germany right and then there's the moment where you know she he and his mom I guess I'll talk about my favorite moment I guess since we're already talking about this wow or we can go to Ben no it's okay it's cool no whatever I don't care I don't care I don't care at all (laughs) I mean, no, Stu no, no, stole no, no, my no, favorite no, go, moment. Go, go, go. I like no, the reveal. No, you go ahead. No, you. You know, I don't Wait, want to interrupt you. Which did I steal? Oh, the reveal of the armor. Of the armor or the of the Scarlett Johansson? 
No, 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 the armor. Oh, part. okay. That was one of my favorite <laughs> moments. But I feel like, for me, Scarlet really s- stole the show for the for this all this whole thing. And the same same thing with Sam Rockwell. I mean, the two moments I think about that were very powerful for me was Sam Rockwell was when he sold that the the birth date was the wrong date, and then he was just like, "Yep, that that, yep, that's it." Mm-hmm. Right, and then you know, there's that reveal later on. She goes, you know, he knows, right? She wasn't born on the first; she was born on the tenth, right? That was huge. Mm-hmm. That was one moment, and then the other one was when JoJo is asking for his father, and he is just that he doesn't want to talk to his mom because mom he can tell his mom's not eating, and she's been drinking and stuff like that. So she's very heavy hearted at this moment. And he's just crying for his dad and just like, no, I want to talk to my dad. And she goes, you want to talk to your dad? All right, fine. She puts on the jacket, you know, walks around and then goes and grabs like the the charcoal from like the fireplace and puts it on her face and stuff like that. And you're, you're starting to try to figure out, it's like, is he fighting for, you know, their freedom? Or is, she fi- is he on the side of the Nazis? And then you get this kind of like this, this experience where you find out that she as a single mom that's trying to raise a son who doesn't see that they're on the wrong side, that he's on the wrong side of this war, right? That they should be trying to save as many people as possible, not trying to eliminate an entire race of people just because they're different. Um, and so, you know, she, she does her best and she's holding back and then, you know, but a little bit seeps out, right? But then she's like, you know, you, just go dance with your mother and stuff like that. And so I think that was that was an incredibly powerful moment that was building from the very beginning that she was trying to get him to understand that they're on the wrong side. They should be trying to liberate Germany from the clutches of the Nazis. And it is all it just rolls into this one moment where he's frustrated because she's not seeing what he's seeing, but she doesn't want to reveal to him that there she's on the complete opposite side that he's on, but she doesn't want to dash his hopes because she loves him so much and she doesn't want to hurt her son who believes in this cause so much. So, you know, I think those two moments were were absolutely paramount and they were absolutely well done. And, you know, I I think Scarlett Johansson was uh, one of the big, uh, you know, selling points for this one. Ben, what was your favorite part of the movie? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well i was gonna say the shoe scene but i'm like oh fuck it you know well, oh shit i stole both that. scenes no 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 <laughs> i know dude you, he stole one from me and then stole one from and me. then i was gonna be like oh you know that scene where you know scarlett johansson pretends to be his dad but you know david took that one so i'm just like <laughs> well, what, what, what's left i I'll tell you, a treasure trove. His, this is Ben's a favorite movie. scene was the grenade scene. <laughs> Holy fuck, that grenade scene was pretty great, though. I What was so great about that fucking grenade scene was Sam Rockwell's fucking takeaway from it, you know? His his scene closer where he's just like, yeah, don't do what he did. You know? <laughs> fucking kid just gets hit by a grenade and he just like nonchalantly just looks at him and he's just like, yeah, don't do that. But, um... <laughs> How is how is he not more injured? That's my question. Yeah, I, I think I they know. tried to do something with it, but um, maybe makeup it couldn't really do it justice. I know he had some walking issues, but that's about it. Uh, yeah. I would say my favorite and the favorite. and the Harry Potter scar on his face. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's just uh, on his I'm cheek. So, I'm, I'm hideous. I'm hideous. I'm a, you know I'm a freak, and I couldn't really tell. But you know whatever. Uh, I would have to say, aside from, you know, all the stuff that we said, I really enjoyed um, Taika's take on on Adolf, especially at the end of the movie, you know. Uh, You know, Hitler shows up a few times throughout the movie and just like, oh, what's wrong, man? You know, you want a cigarette? You know, it was fucking great. You know, he was always (laughs) in power. But what was really great was that he was subtly just, you know, saying all these these terrible things, you know. Like, he, he would, like, say something, and then he would, you know, start monologuing or start, you know, s- you know, reciting actual speeches that Hitler performed. And it got more and more serious throughout the, the film, right? And then, finally, the payoff at the end is when, you know, um, when Germany lost the war, 
and then Jojo sees Hitler for the last time, and Hitler, you know, usually is looking really well, you know, even when um, Jojo was struggling, he was eating, like, that unicorn, right? And uh, we finally get, (laughs) we we finally get to the final scene, and, you know, Hitler goes into the room, and he's all, you know, distraught, and he's all in rags, you know, beat up. And, you know, he's oh, like, and he has a bullet hole in his head. Yeah, oh yeah, that was great. I, that was a really nice little detail that he had a bullet hole in his head. He's like, hey, you gotta help me, man. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're still in this together, right? And then he he's like, come on, you you, you love you love Germany. You have to, you know. Give me, he, give me a Heil Hitler. Yeah, he's like, give me give me a little Heil. He's like, no. He's like, come, come on, just a little Heil. Just a little bit. Just, just a little. Just, 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 just hire me. Just hire me. Just, just a little bit. And then he's just like, Fuck off, Hitler! And he just like fucking kicks, fucking, kicks him through the window. Lou Kangs him out the window. <laughs> I know, Jesus Christ, that was such, such a good one. I, um, I was actually looking. I was at after he had found out from um, oh shit, what's what was his friend's name? Uh, oh, Yorkie. Oh, Yorkie. York. Yorkie. Okay, yeah. well, what Yorkie after was he found so out, good. I wanted uh, more of Yorkie. Yeah. yeah. After he found out from uh, him that Hitler uh, killed himself. Um, I was hoping that if they did do another like Hitler um, uh, scene, yeah. that he would have uh, like a bullet hole in his head because I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that was great that they added that. Um, my, but I think my my favorite thing in this movie, it, it's such a small scene, but it really captured the the charm of it, and you know, just how great it is. It was a uh, when Scarlett Johansson, when she was, I think it was one night when, um, when Jojo was at home and he's waiting for his mom and he doesn't know where she is and she comes home really late, right? And she's like sneaking through the house and, you know, she's hunched over and then she notices that Jojo's just staring at her, you know, and she fucking just, just stops dead in her tracks and she doesn't know what to do. So she just starts doing the fucking robot. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. I, don't, I remember that. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I don't know why it was just like such a fucking small scene, but it really, I don't know. It, it was a really nice example of how the yeah. whole feel of the movie was. It was just yeah. like small bits and pieces of that scattered throughout. You know that when added up, make this really great emotional yeah. story. And really I, funny. I don't, I don't think there's a scene with Scarlett Johansson or Sam Rockwell that wasn't great. I know. They really stole that movie. Well, I mean, everyone stole the movie. Fuck. Right. right. Yeah, no, absolutely. This movie was fantastic. I definitely would love to see it again. Um, this is one of those movies that I'm pretty sure we're going to look back to 2019 and be like, wow, this never cracked into the top 10, but it should have. Based on, you know, it unfortunately just doesn't have a really big advertising budget, but everybody was casted really, really well. I always think it's really awesome. I really think it's a um, it's such a treat to be able to see a, a actor director, because um, I think that's one of probably one of the hardest things to do is direct yourself, because um, there's nobody to give you like direction and stuff. But you know, but he or sold it, or it's the it. easiest yeah. because there's nobody to tell you what to do. Yeah, whatever you do is the right thing. Yeah, I don't if know. He, maybe he's not that big of a critic of himself. Nobody can like, question no, I you. I think everything I do is awesome. Yep. But in this case, um, it was even that it was true. So. Yeah. So, any final thoughts? Uh, no. I think um, I think we hit all the big ones. I think another good power, like a runner-up for favorite scene, would be when, uh, and this goes to the more dramatic side, is when Sam Rockwell. Um, Kind of, although this is, I do have a little bit of a beef with what how this actually played out was uh, at the end when Sam Rockwell um, kind of like got Jojo away from the Russians by calling him a Jew and you know, got him out of that situation of being you know mm-hmm. captured as a prisoner. So I think that that was that was a really good scene, but I don't think that when prisoners were captured like that, they're that they're just executed. Uh, which I think is what the implication was. Um, I heard the Russians weren't as kind as some of the as the U.S. So yeah, I'm possible. not sure if that was maybe completely yeah. inaccurate, but I'm sure it's probably it's possible. It I'm could sure. be. I could be totally wrong. I'm not a wow. 
When did you get here, Darren? I didn't know you were yeah. on the podcast. Well, actually, this map wow. will show you wow. this. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, did they ever mention what uh, city or town that he was in? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. But, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like this had this feeling of like a short mo- like a short film. It definitely you know, flew by. It, it, that it, vibe, it right? It, it definitely wasn't a movie where, you know, you're wondering, oh, man, when the fuck is this going to end? You know, it's just droning on. It was definitely a movie where you're like, yeah, I want more. I want more. Ah, oh, it's fucking over. I actually thought I was pretty surprised for how long the runtime was. I felt like it it felt longer to me. Yeah. Yeah, I would love I I would hope that this gets more uh gets more play and then more people get to see it cuz definitely they did this movie deserves to do well, I think in general cuz everybody sold their characters well, story was really well written. Um and I don't I don't think anything was thrown away in this movie like everything had a purpose and it definitely uh it definitely sold that. So, um any fi- any other final thoughts? Nope. That's I'm it. Good. Right. No, that's it. Well, all right. Well, I think we we thoroughly enjoyed this one. Uh, for next week, we'll be seeing Arctic Dogs. Nice. And I can't you wait. Guys will be seeing. I actually kind of can't wait for we, when we watch a movie that we is just so bad. Like we go into it thinking it's gonna be good, but then it's just total garbage. Like I'm I, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, so next week we'll be seeing Arctic Dogs. Um, this week, Jojo Rabbit. If you get a chance, definitely go see it. If not, you know, when it's Blu ray, DVD, and Amazon Prime, I hope it shows up on Netflix so that way more people get a chance to see it and, and enjoy it. Um, you know, I'm hoping that this will be one of those that'll get, no- I'm sure this will probably get nominated for something, right? Oh, yeah, Best for sure. For sure. sure. It's got to get yeah. something. I hope you know. I think maybe we might see Scarlett Johansson as a best supporting actress. Maybe. I, I wouldn't I mean, be surprised. I don't know how the Academy stuff works, but if I were in charge, then yeah. <laughs> for sure. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, join us next week where we review Arctic Dogs or maybe Ford v Ferrari. We'll see. And uh, once again, I'm your host, David. I'm Stuart. And I'm Ben. Don't forget to tip your Reiki masters, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.